begin the regular select board meeting and starting with the minutes from the March 13th meeting which I um I think it looked, I, I've read them over they look fine and accurate yeah they look good to me too so yep, me too all in favor aye aye, aye. okay uh, where am I down here <clears throat> and then um now we already did that um so the um we have some vacant appointments but maybe we'll save that out till after we move through um the guests we have in the house um dean and um janice i think you're here to talk about the um about the emergency shelter or skate space or, or both I'm here for both, but yeah. Dean can do Do you want to start? That Go ahead. Okay. Get yours. Well, the there's a sh one sheet there with what's go what I want to talk to you about. Um, the clerks have put a message on the answering machine. Oh, there so if there's a emergency, <coughs> people that call the town office can get directed to either Leslie or me or that. select board. Um, I talked to Tyga Christie, who's the Southern Regional Coordinator for Department of Public Safety Emergency Management. She said all of the towns that have shelters in the southern half of the state, none of them go through the select board. They just, if the shelter leaders decide to open a shelter, you open it and then you call the select board and then the select board gets a hold of DPS and they tell 211 mm -hmm. in case people call 211. So I just wanted to have that bit of a policy change and she also said that it really needs to be written into the town emergency plan. And I, I think there's something, Michaela and I put something in there this last time around about the shelter, but I'm, I'm not exactly how, sure how it's worded. So, um, then there's, Leslie and I came up with level one, level two shelters. So level one is if a resident has emergent needs, um, such as a home fire flood or extended power outage, uh, saying cold weather less than 30, no, no backup heat, um, or no power more than 24 hours, or if there's families with infants, that don't have water and don't have heat, they need mm -hmm. shelter faster, usually than older folks. So that'd be like a level one shelter opening. And then level two would be if there's an extended period and there's a power, big power outage, we would have um, a warming shelter open first. And then if there's a need for overnight stay, and I thought if it's a small number of people, we could use this room, because there's a generator now, people could come and charge their devices and whatever they have to do, get water or something. But uh, if they need overnight, we can go down to the school. Mm -hmm. And the school's closing. They said no to Suzuki this summer because they're replacing the heating system, apparently. So I checked with um, the principal, Lindy. She said if there's a need for a shelter, we can still get in there and the power is not going to be off. And it's still going to be usable. I don't know what kind of heat they're installing or what's going on down there, but um, she said we could access it for a shelter if we need it. I think they're putting in a pellet boiler. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think so. And just as a kind of an aside, I called 211. Well, I tried to call 211. I have EC fiber up on the hill, and I couldn't get through with numerous tries. So I called EC Fiber and they said, oh, you have to, they changed, the state says because they have the suicide hotline, it's three digits, you can't only dial the, that three digit number. If you want to call um, 211, you have to do it only from a cell phone. It does not work from a landline. And I really? said, so when the power's out, and people need to do 211, and they don't have a cell phone or we don't have cell service, then what? And they just said, 
well, this woman, Chris, uh, Tyga Christie from DPS said, oh, we hadn't thought about that. Hadn't thought about Just that. Kidding. So she's supposed nice. to talk to her supervisor Oops. and get back to me. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Exactly <laughs> what happened in Irene. Yeah. Let nobody get a hold of anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm still working on that. Interesting. Now we do have a new emergency guy too. Larry Pleasant. Right, I know. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. He's gotta go through a lot of training now. Yeah. He understands yeah. that. Yeah. Um yeah. and I've also um talked with uh Rebecca O'Berry at Gifford, she's the VP over there, and we long ago Vic and I had come up with an MOU with the Gifford if we wanted to use the clinic space for some mm -hmm. reason, an emergency, but that had never been renewed. So I updated it and renewed it with her, and they signed it. So um, I think I gave you a copy of that, didn't I, Julie? Thank they put in the book? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the term on that? Two, one it, year, two years? It's a, I told her I'd get back to her next year, so okay. we'll just keep going on a one-year basis. Okay. okay. Okay, that's my spiel. Okay, if we do the level one, level two, and I decide, Leslie and I decide when it when and if we need to open. That makes sense to me. I mean, the less yeah. less um, hands that you have to go through in an right. emergency, the better. I think. Well, and if we have a real true emergency, you're going to be busy. Yeah. You know. You know. So Leslie and I can figure it out. Of course, we'll call you and say we're going to open a shelter yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But I think we should just be able to make a decision and call the volunteers and get moving on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea yeah. too. Yep. Okay. Well, for that. Great. So is that? Um, we, is, yeah, we need to put that in writing. Is that a, a, an official policy? It's a change. A change. Change, change of policy. To, yeah, I can write something up and bring it down. Drop it off. We, yeah. we should probably look at the what it says in there now yeah. and then see yeah. what, what we need to add to make that happen. Make that an official. Yeah. yeah. That would be great if you could write up a draft of that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> All right, Dean. Um, let's see. Where do I begin? Um, I did that one. go in front of the select board early in September <coughs> asking for some legal help with the possible easement uh, of property line from Martha Slater to Skate Space. Um, and I've had discussions with Dune regarding lawyers to use. I did reach out to uh, both Cricket and this Ebenezer Punderson. Mm -hmm. Um, I sent an email, I think it was four o'clock today, <laughs> that you probably all haven't read, uh, but it, it's skimming it. Um, I kind of, I got the feeling that after talking with Martha over the course of the winter, um, an easement would be adequate for this and not a boundary change for the use of... That was like the opposite of what my conversation with Martha was. I so thought it would be um, cleaner and more um, clear to do the minor lot line adjustment. So bottom line, because I did talk to Martha yeah. um, this afternoon after I sent that email, and I shared it with her as well, because mm -hmm. I want everybody on the same page, but um, bottom line, she does not want to incur any cost. Right. And so it doesn't matter how it's resolved to me. The, the, the number that we got from Ebenezer is, you know, 220 an hour, mm -hmm. and he's got a letter of intent in that, what I sent you. I can read it if you want. It's, but, yeah, no, we don't need to. Okay. Um, you know, he thinks it's going to be somewhere between $1,500 and $2,200 mm -hmm. to do this. $2,500. So I'm requesting that that go forward to basically get this easement. 
and you and I talked. We an could easement, or, or I guess we have to clarify whether it's an easement or a boundary line right. adjustment. The Martha has something to contribute. Yeah, I, to I mean, when I gave the land to the town 20, 30, however many years ago, for the initial thing, it was because Katie Doherty was in my son Peter's class and because I just wanted to do something that I could do to help. And I had no idea until just recently, of course, that there was a problem with the way it had been um, surveyed or whatever till Cricket picked that up. So when I was talking to Dean today, I mean, I don't want to cost the, 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 I didn't know, he mentioned something about that lawyer thought I might have to hire a lawyer and everything. And I don't really have extra money for things like that. And I don't really see why it has to be hard like that. All I want, I, I, I had been asked, am I willing to sign to, you know, an easement or whatever to let it be the, where it is, you know, um, and that's fine with me. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I, I'm happy to to do whatever makes is is the easiest for the town and the cheapest, because I want skate space to to continue to you know be there and they're working on fixing it up and making it even better. So okay, does this make any sense? I'm sorry, I just was just trying to say that I just was I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make it as as simple and and as cheap as possible. <laughs> I can read Ebenezer's email. It cl clarifies it, and basically, sure. it's it's lawyerese. They basically yeah. want they he wants to talk. He's the town lawyer, and then he needs somebody else to talk to in a lawyer fashion. Mm -hmm. And in reality, if somehow he could write up an easement, she would sign it, and we'd be done with it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I see. The simplest version of this. I don't see why it would, should take fifteen hundred dollars or twenty five hundred. I don't see they're going to have to survey it again. They're going to well, maybe you should or, use a different lawyer. I yeah, we could well, not that's the ten locked ten into lawyer. to him. But yeah. the other thing is, the easement she continues to own the property. Right. Right. So if something happens, it's tomorrow, really then, you know I, I'm going to read it because it, it will straight. clarify the um, until it's broken. Uh, this was in response to Cricket. Uh, from the town's perspective, fee simple ownership would be better. Yeah, so um, that will take the form. Um, Dean, it sounds like the town and Martha first need to agree on whether this will take the form of an easement or a fee simple transfer. From the town's perspective, fee simple ownership would be better, but if Martha prefers a perpetual easement, that can work. I would say that for Martha, a fee simple transfer makes liability issues cleaner for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's looking out for yeah. her sides, as well. For the, for the select, I'm going to just finish the email. Sure, I'm sorry, excuse me. For the select board meeting tonight, just let them know that my fee is 220 an hour and I don't need a retainer. My guess would be that from soup to nuts, whether this is an easement or a fee simple transfer, my bill end up between 1500 and 2500. This would include permit compliance, town zoning permit, and state wastewater exemption. Title update, drafting, signing, recording, necessary transfer docs. Uh, hopefully Martha will have her own attorney and this will certainly make things easier on my end. So mm -hmm. he's that's what his right. recommendation is. She doesn't want to pay for an attorney. Um, I have, I've also thought about reaching out to somebody I know and try to get a pro bono scenario. Right. Yeah, and because I'm curious, what is a fee simple versus a minor lot line adjustment? Is that the same thing? I, I think they are. I think they are. That's just more lawyerly way of saying yeah, it. Yeah, it still needs to, the deeds need to be. Um, excuse me, I, I misunderstood about an easement. What I, 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 I didn't have any idea that I would still technically own the property with that way. No, I, I want, you know, keep it, uh, belong to the town. It's fine. I'll sign off on it. You know, what, wherever the part is to adjust the lot line, you know. So you're, you saying, know? you're saying move the boundary. Yes. I guess. I mean, that makes, I don't know what everyone else thinks, but it's, 
that's what I was thought it, it was going to be was that they were going to change where the lot line was going to be. So I wouldn't own a, that prior part anymore. It made sense to me. Why should I? Because it's part of the, of skate space. And, right. um, you know, that's fine. I'm willing to sign off on that. I, I don't know how to go about it, though. Well, we're, we'll, we'll help you with that, that part of it. And I think that I, I agree we could do a little um, reaching out to see if um, someone would be interested in doing it at a reduced rate. But I think that that um, and my thought is the town would be covering any expense on Martha's behalf because we're yeah. she's gifting us this land. Well, and plus it makes it cleaner down the road. Yeah. Uh, if thank you. You know, property. if that's possible, I would appreciate it. I, um, I just, um, I don't have a lawyer. <laughs> the last time I had a lawyer was when I wrote my will out 10, 12 years ago and Sandy Haas was still a lawyer. And so I don't have a lawyer. Anyway, all right, thank you very much. So it just, it just incurs a you know a survey cost, mm -hmm. um, just a line change basically, right? Yeah, you know it's not yeah. that big a deal really. They just need to find the pens and shoot it and yeah. be done with it. Drop a little <clears throat> map shows it where it I, went. I feel yeah. like I'm getting deeper into things that I really um, had never planned to be in. <laughs> right, and yeah. I right. would like to, you know, I I will obviously help. Jan has, has helped immensely. And basically, the w reason we're doing this is to clean up the yeah. grants that we're going for. Right. right. And to not have anything in the way when we actually do this project. Yeah. So, and, um, but I'd rather focus on that than, than this to talk to lawyers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, let's um, leave that in our hands. I then. will reach out to the one thing, the one person that I know. Yeah. Um, and I will respond to the select board Great. in that in that re respect. Yep. Um, but there's no guarantees. I haven't mentioned it. I just I want to I want I want to move it forward somehow. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. And the deadline, the first grant deadline is June, right, Dean? Uh, which one is that? I got about I don't know. seven. There's so I'm, many of them, I'm but I think with. one of them's due, and the other one's further September. on in the year. You had one that was early September. Yeah. That's the. That's the big one the that big we're one, going the US, for. Uh, DA one. The yeah. recreation. Or whatever rec thing it is. Um, but we're we're searching for other resources. I reached out to uh, Lawson's um, just recently, and, and Jan did as well. And I've got a couple more for our next meeting, Jan. So. Okay. Um, yeah, Wednesday. We're on it. I just don't want to deal with lawyers. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it just goes down this rabbit hole. Yeah, it does. Quickly. But it's when she donated the land, yeah. however many years ago it was, and it should have been correct at that point. Yeah. And it was only by accident that it wasn't. Well, you know, I have a feeling that I, <laughs> this is my simple v version. If we, if Cricket hadn't brought it up, I probably would have just gone ahead and done what we need to do. And nobody would know the difference, right? You know, and Which it would be done, <laughs> and we wouldn't have to jump through these hoops until the day Martha sells her house. house right. Right. Then you right. <laughs> I know. And I want to dot all the eyes and yeah. cross all the teeth. Doing it correctly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, well, we'll get it figured out. Yeah, we'll get it figured out. <laughs> we'll get it figured out. All right. So, do you want? I'll I'll be in touch with. Do I just email you and they all read it? Is that how it works? Yeah, that yeah. works, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. Both of you. All right. That's good. Yep. Appreciate it. Yep. yep. Okay, um, on to the new business. The, um, the few vacant appointments that we had still outstanding. Um, has anyone had a chance to chat with any of these people that we're going to talk to? Um, Nick Deputo yeah. and Bowen, just one, uh, Nick is going to take it. I did send him an email because we recently received um, screen update information. So I forwarded it to him and asked him if he said, oh, it, Nick will take it on. So. Okay, so I move to appoint Nick um, Picuto at the, for the Green Up Day coordinator. Second. 
Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. We we'll go from the bottom and go up. Um, has anyone had a chance to talk with Robert Mayer about being on the budget committee? So we'll let that. How about Tim Crowley? He's in Florida. He's in Florida? Mm-hmm. For a while. All right. Um, and he's um, talked about to Jim Bowen, someone who talked about, mentioned him. So we still have a few out that there. In the <laughs> It's so obviously we I kind of let that <laughs> linger. <laughs> well, um, well, we got one. Mm -hmm. We'll move, um, move on to do more as we move on. Okay. Okay. Troy said he was willing to do that. One, if you guys needed it. Pardon? Which one? Troy said that he was willing to do um, course Maybe, uh, South Royal t the transfer, transfer station, station or whatever it was. Okay. Tension yeah. blowing spot. Yeah, he said he would be happy to do it if you guys. Okay. Is that the Why recycling coordinator too? Does he want to do that? He said that he would, but Julie works closely with Bonnie frequently, so Julie did that. Yeah. So Julie's got that one. Yeah. Okay. I didn't bring okay. my list. And Troy's on here, so if he wanted to say no, he could unmute himself, but All he right, did so offer to do that. <laughs> I move to point Troy to the White River Alliance. Second. Five. Second. On favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, Troy. There. Thank Thanks, you, Troy. Troy. And Martha has got something. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear Troy's last name or what Troy was being appointed to. Something about the transfer station, right? That is the White River the Alliance, Alliance Royalton Advisory Committee. Okay, yeah. and and um, White. So it's the White River uh, Royalton Advisory Committee. White River Alliance. Uh huh. Royal Yep. That's what it is. Alliance Royalton Advisory Committee. Got it. Okay, and what is Troy's last name? LaPal. Oh, that's Kristen's husband. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. All right. I apologize. Oh, good. Sorry. <laughs> hey, that's on record. Hopefully, he doesn't. So, we have an uh, application. <laughs> from the Vermont Grand Fondo event on Saturday, June 24th in the early afternoon. Um, what is that? The Grand Fondo is, um, it's like a, um, it's a, um, it's a bike race ride that um, Rochester is one of 12 plus towns through, through which 450 cyclists will pass over an eight hour time frame. Um, and the department, the Vermont Department of Public Safety requires them to gain permission from each town to notify each town that they will be um, coming through and they will sign roadways and busy intersections. And they've done this for a few years. Okay. So it's a, yes, they're the ones, they, they tried to go up Bethel Mountain Road when it was torn right, apart. It was torn apart, yeah, the <laughs> oh, no. part, yeah. And they are insured, they have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I'd move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That requires a signature. That requires a signature. Yeah. Do I have to bend it on my thumb? I can't do anything. Mm. <coughs> Is All right. And <coughs> so we also have a, a Request to um, change the name of a road from a road to a drive. Did we table that? We're going to table. Yeah. We're going to table that because we're okay. Well, I'm just going to give update. We um, that process involves communicating with everyone that lives on that road, and we haven't been able to. And nine one one. And nine one one. So we have still some more um, mm -hmm. some things to check off so that was tabled because we're not going to make that So who would yet. incur the expense of new signs? <laughs> the individual who has requested this? Mm. Is there a sign? Yeah, Every road be. has a sign. Yeah. should be a road sign that says, you know, because it's just, it's in there. I don't think the town one. should have to incur the expense of a sign. We would have to, we'd have to put a new sign at the en entrance because it's a separate route, road or drive or whatever, you know, How far it's a separate lane. What's that? How far do we plow? Oh, it's not a, it's private, <laughs> but it's, road. it's okay. private road, okay. but it's not, we don't plow it. But. I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. So if it's a private road, I would think that they could 
the, up to the sign. Yeah, because it should say private yeah. on the sign Absolutely. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not town road, so yeah, you know, they, they'd have yeah. to change the sign themselves, I would think. Because it's not a town supported road. But for an E911 purposes, I would think it'd have to have a sign mm -hmm. as part of it, and it should say private on it. Doesn't any road that has two houses on it have to have a sign? I don't know if that's a rule or not, but I would think so. I would think there has to be some identification for E911. Okay, well, that to be continued. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, we've got the, um, the um, RSUD Rochester Stockbridge Unified District school vote is May the 2nd. And so we're, um, we're gonna um, warn that the legal voters of the town of Rochester are hereby notified and warned to meet on Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 at the Rochester town office located at 67 School Street in Rochester, Vermont, beginning at 10 a.m. when the polls will open and ending at 7 p.m. to vote by Australian ballot to transact the following business. And that's going to, oh wait, this is, that was to, um, okay, so we're, Putting a couple together. This is the announcement to vote on whether or not to authorize cannabis retailers and integrated licenses in town pursuant to 7 VSA 80, 863. And then the others, the one that we were talking about, I thought I was talking about first, the <laughs> shall the voters of the town of Rochester authorize. That's that one. Okay, <laughs> going back. Where is the school? This is the one. Thank you. The um, annual meeting warning for the school. I guess I was that was right. late to school. <laughs> but this makes the point yeah. that we're doing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We're going to be busy that day. All right, and the, um, the legal voters of Rochester Stockbridge Unified District, consisting of the towns of Rochester and Stockbridge, notified and warned to meet at the Rochester campus or the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District in Rochester on May 2nd at 7 p.m. to consider and act upon the following articles 1 through 10 and discuss the articles to be voted upon by Australian ballot article 11 only. So the um, you guys want me to read through all these or mm -hmm. we just we can basically the one for Australian Valid is um, budget. The no. budget. No, no not it's the budget. only the directors. Only oh. the directors to the elected directors. The rest of them are going to be. You have to be in person at the meeting to elect a moderator, electric a school district a clerk, uh, a school meeting. district mm -hmm. treasurer to fix the salaries, uh, and um, onward. That's going to be a floor vote. That would be a floor vote. And that is also to um, shall the voters of the school district approve the school board to expend $4,652,963, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. But it makes the town budget it seems pretty, pretty <laughs> moderate. <doesn't laughs> yeah. Martha something. All right, Martha's got a question. Okay. I got somewhat confused there. Am yeah, I good. correct that the meeting <laughs> is on Tuesday evening the 2nd at, at 7 o'clock, or is it on Monday the 1st at 7 o'clock? No, it's um, May 2nd at 7 p.m. Okay, so that's Tuesday, May 2nd at 7 p.m., and, and everything is going to be decided there in the auditorium, except for you have to vote on the budget by Australian ballot while you're there. You can't just raise your hand. Raise your no, hand. No, 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 opposite. Opposite. Okay, it's not the, I'm only the only thing that is by Australian ballot, which you can be vote all day, is to elect the directors to the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District. For the Rochester directors. To what day the is Rochester. that? Tuesday. Right. Tuesday. That is the second. Yeah. Here. So I have only one position. It's only one position that's up. So there. the meeting is until after you have the. No, I'm confused. Three. Two positions. Yes. There's two parts. We, to we, we vote here at the town office during the day for the new director to represent 
Rochester on the school board. And then at 7 o'clock, we go to the elementary gymnasium in the Rochester. Mm -hmm. The gym. The gymnasium in Rochester to vote on the budget from in the, person. From the floor. Yeah. From the floor. So the gym, so you vote during the day 10 to 7 on school directors. And then for, at 7 p.m., you go to the gym for the meeting and voting on the budget. Right. Correct. Right. So I have a question. Yes, Nancy. When our two schools merged, did the policy of voting the budget by Australian ballot also change? We voted years ago to have Australian ballot for our budget. And we're not going to vote Australian ballot any longer for our budget, according to that warning. According to that warning. Are you saying that we voted that when we were just Rochester? Or after but we the never voted not to do Australian ballot. But the Rochester School Board voted, has dissolved, and it is now the Rochester Stock. So did the, that's what I asked. Was that policy? Did that dissolve with that policy with, with that merger? And my guess would be yes. The way that Tara explained it, that it, this happened over four years ago. It used to be set up this way. So with COVID, it all changed and became. Australian ballot for everything. Now it's going back to the way it, they said that it was before. How many years ago? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay. Seems a little bizarre, but yeah. you know. Sounds a little crazy to me. Yeah. It's going to be a busy day. And you can request absentee ballots for both votes, um, and they'll be available to mail out or pick up. You got that, Martha? For both the votes, you mean um, for? It you better clarify be that. In person and no. Both, for for both the town, the special the town cannabis. cannabis, and for the director, Australian ballot, Correct. but um, not the budget. But not the budget. That's not, I will. I will do my best to to uh, make sure I get this right. And I think what I'm going to do, if Julie doesn't mind, is when I get. <laughs> that section written, I will give her a buzz tomorrow and read it to her and say, Julie, is that correct? And she will either say yes or no, <laughs> if she doesn't mind. Thank you. All right. Boy, that was um, painful. <laughs> yeah. It, is painful. Um, it took us a couple of days to get it in the office yeah. too. I was like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Um, so do we have um, anyone on Zoom from representing the library tonight? Um, no, we have Jeff Gephardt and okay. I mean, maybe part of it is that. See no one from the, Terry Severy is <clears throat> not on there probably. Nope. Um, hey Jeff. Hey. What's up? Well, we got a report from uh, the uh, historical preservation folks about uh, the library. Um, and they've got a lot of different ideas as to how things should go um, and, and what I have uh, proposed in the draft uh, scope of work. So I will uh, go back to the drawing board with that. Um, the, uh, we also had a uh, contractor up on the roof um, it was last week. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to find the two screw holes that Jimmy Harvey saw from inside the attic. He did um, do some uh, caulking, flashing. Flashing was in pretty bad shape up at, uh, where the chimney comes up against the back of the gable end of the building. And took some photos and characterized the, uh, the roof as uh, needing work. Uh, the fasteners are rusting out and you know they're starting to uh, have holes bigger than the fasteners uh, in some locations. Uh, it is a 40 year old roof and their recommendation was to put a new one up. Okay well <clears throat> that's why we sent one up someone up there to look at it see what the situation yeah. was. Yeah, um, one of the things that we, I don't know is uh, what can, um, what kind of uh, limitations exist 
or getting prices on things that I assume have to be bid out. Um, uh, you know, a large, is there a, a dollar amount where things are required to be put out to bid? And what happens if you have several stages of things? Well, they, they, you know, trying to get to the grants, um, got to have some kind of idea as to what things are going to cost. Generally, $10,000 is the threshold when we um, need to go out to bid. And mm -hmm. the question of, of phasing it, um, that's a good question. I mean, there has been times when we have phased projects to keep, um, you know, to sidestep that requirement. But uh, this is a pretty big job. I don't know how easily um, I think that it... It's probably going to be considered all one project, uh, but um, I, I don't know. I I was been pondering this for a couple of days and thinking that um, we had we had talked about using ARPA money for some of this library stuff, mm -hmm. and maybe a, a choice we may may want to think about is to uh, get a price on re-roofing and look at that as part of the ARPA piece mm -hmm. because we could do that separate from what we don't know what this historical piece of this library is going to be in the grant process that we'd have to go through but the roof part we could nail down as far as we could get three bids on replacement and we could figure out what that would cost and the ARPA money would be used for that and that would take care of the roof but it wouldn't do anything for the sides. But I think our original process when we talked about using ARPA money was we were looking at like 40000 for the building mm -hmm. for that library. And we were hoping to just redo the sides, but it's turned into something else that, you know, I'm not sure that that's going to be the amount we're going to need to use for coverage. But I think if we need to replace the roof, it would be something that we could use the ARPA money for, that we could nail down without any issue, and we could get stand and seam roof or metal corrugated, however you want to, mm -hmm. we want to do that, or even shingle if that's what we want to go back to, um, and get a price for that, and we could nail that down with three different. As projects. long as that project, the roof, could also be considered part of the match, Right. for the grant that they're going for. Right, if we, we can we, do that. Because we, we did say something to the effect of a 10% match to the grant up to $20,000. Right. So we, if we, we could go ahead and do the roof as long as it becomes part of the big plan and, for and the grant. Use, use it as that yes. buffer too. And that might be something that we should look at and how we do that. So I, I don't know, what, what's your thought on that, Jeff? That sounds like a good idea to me. It uh, takes care of the roof with one funding source, and it, uh, the matching component of it helps the rest yeah. of the project. And it puts the fire out right. for what the damage is being created by the roof. Mm -hmm. Well, it solves one, one problem anyway. Yeah. The top problem. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Start from the top and work our way yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to, you know, we, we got a report from um, the historic preservation folks. Um, they feel, actually, they feel that the little tiny piece of flashing that got put on after the fact, uh, the separation between the first and the second floor has solved all our water problems. They, uh, I don't buy it. Um, there's no drainage plane, there's no weather resistant barrier to my knowledge, at least as far as I can see. And I would love to be able to take a little piece out of that wall to confirm exactly what is there. Um, the, uh, but, but uh, you know, what they feel is that there have just been so many layers of paint put over the top of it that the paint now can't adhere and it's buckling and pushing off. Um, the wetting on the backside didn't help that. But the problem is that they're suggesting is that we 
Um, we basically scrape all the paint off the uh, outside and repaint and that that will take care of things. I believe we've got to create an airspace in there and and get uh, when things get wet inside, we need to give it a chance to get dry and we need the wetting and the drying to happen at roughly the same rate. And that's, you know, that's what's uh, current uh, best practice from a building science standpoint. If we take all the lead uh, covered uh, cladding off there, uh, we can get a, a membrane on the that's uh, breathable on the outside uh, of the, um, the studs on the sheathing. Um, we can create either a three eighth to a three quarter inch airspace, um, put uh, the material in the bottom and at the top to keep rodents and uh, critters out. Um, and putting on the new cladding, we can paint with primer the back side of that cladding as well as the front side. And then two coats uh, on the uh, top coats uh, on it um, will give it a much more robust uh, lifetime. Uh, that process I utilized in my own home. Um, I painted it in 2004. Um, that house, uh, this house, uh, uh, has no problems where the vented rain screen exists. Was that paint or stain? Yeah. What was that, Frank? What was that paint or stain? Um, the where the the good part of the wall is paint. Okay. I would not recommend stain. Okay. But I, what I'll do is I will try to uh, push back uh, politely um, regarding. Uh, you know, the, the original reason we got going on this uh, is fixing the wall assembly. Right. Um, that doesn't solve the issue with the windows, though. That doesn't address that water sitting on those sills. Well, I think we, we need to probably make sure that we clear the snow along those walls a little bit. But um, actually, Creating the water a vented rain screen, creating a vented rain screen, which creates a space for that water to drain out of, um, will fix the problem around the windows. Uh, particularly if we replace the windows, where we can then much more easily tie in the weather-resistant barrier and get everything sealed properly. Um, it's a challenge to seal around the window opening when there's already a window in it. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and see if we can uh, get them to. Yeah, I, I don't really see why they should object to to this component because it's not a visual thing at all. Right. All right. Yeah. Push away. Mm -hmm. I'll be in touch with you about the roof, Jeff. I think we might we might want to look at it that way and see what what we get for pricing on that. Mm -hmm. Does and, does the board have a sta have standard requirements for insurance and you know some some basic language with contracts that go out from a construction standpoint? And, and I think there are some things that. You know, referencing uh, meeting energy code where it pertains. Um, this building may not pertain if it's in the historic district, um, but also, you know, adhering to um, fall safe criteria, um, you know, having making sure that uh, people are properly insured so that liability doesn't wind up back with the town somehow. <laughs> Jeff, as of April 1st, which is right around the corner, um, all residential contractors need to be licensed by the state of Vermont. They have to go to the Office of Professional Regulation and sign themselves up with a fee. So yep. along with that process, um, they submit their insurance and their, um, their 
corporate registration, whether it be a corporation or an LLC, along with that. So you would you would want to be looking for a state certified contractor because as of April first, they're all supposed to be certified. That would help mm -hmm. you there. Yeah, they're not really certified; they're registered. There's other than the uh, insurance requirements that you mentioned, and, and that is correct. Um, other than that, it's simply a registry um, of builders that do projects, I think, that ex that are up to or exceed $10,000, something like that. Um, you know, there's been no enforcement of the energy code um, period um, since its inception in 97. So... Um, you know, I continually find builders who don't know, claim they don't know that there is one. Um, and I've also been trying to uh, get some of the younger ones, uh, some of the links to things like that requirement. Um, and I hand out energy code books to them as well. If uh, I see them on a job site or at farmer's market and they haven't gotten one before. That is a good point, but I think there's some probably some other things that the town may want to consider as boilerplate in, in contracts uh, for construction work. And, and we do. Generally, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we normally fall into a contract as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, well, thank you for puzzling through all this with us, Jeff. You're welcome. Um, yeah, it's, um, making progress little by little. Um, is that it? Grant updates? Yep. Yeah, yeah, grant updates, sir? Not much. Um, we did, on March 20th, receive our final FEMA payment. Oh, we did. I'm excited to say, yes, $47,699.11. So we are done with that. Our final reimbursement for How Brook Design was submitted last week in the amount of $3,500. And I have a letter in there that I asked you to sign, Dune, um, so I can get access to the GEARS mm -hmm. website, um, okay. just so I can keep track of all the grants. Yeah. Yeah. I was, was speaking with Can Cassie Bell, and she asked me to do that. So yeah. that's that. Okay. Then right. We'll be sitting down. Yes next week sometime i think um with john and trying to get rita and chris bump involved and figure out what the class two paving grant that john wants to look at and figure where that can go because that has to be done by april 15th i think it is tax day mm -hmm. <clears throat> i believe and is that, something um, that originated with rita did you, is that something that started with Rita? Like, did she reach out to John about that? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yep, I think that's the same one. And plus, and we'll have to look for another 25,000 after uh, June 30th for the bridge that yeah. we'll have to do, which Chris Bump would do. And, and he has mentioned that he wants to get with us, and I think they asked to, try to get some meeting together last week, but the office was a little bit in an upheaval um, due to circumstances. Yeah, you said he'd be back in touch this week. So we'll get to that. And there's some other things we need to address with them. Yep. Also. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm moving on to old business. We've got um, a... Um, Section two, five, six, and fourteen, and um, in our um, master financial policy that we need to adopt. So section two is a purchasing policy, and section five is a debt management policy. Section six is a capital budget and program policy, and section fourteen is a grant reporting procedure policy. Mm -hmm. And so these are all just um, steps we need to take to um, have our ducks in a row to um, be ready to be compliant with the required financial policy. To, so I'd move to approve these policies. I can second that. Yeah, all in favor? 
Right. Yeah. So a lot of this has um, been um, provided and dictated by by the state and, and the VLCT. It's not like um, we've had to create this out of thin air, but we definitely have to adopt it. So. <coughs> <laughs> and as the world turns, this can always be amended. Yes. The first policies, I don't know if you saw, but they all need to be signed as well. The very first ones we gave you a signature page, so there, there's a couple of things with the stickers. Right, you can, yeah, make sure you sign everything. Okay. So we got those. Anything else on Zoom? Room's kind of emptied out. Room's all set. It's just us. So uh, I guess we'll adjourn and pay some bills. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Take care.